I welcome you uh, to the fifth module of the course titled Psychology of Emotion Theory and Applications. So, today we will be discussing lecture number 10 and it is the first lecture of module 5. So, today uh, basically we will be talking about the concept of positive emotions. So, before we talk about today's lecture, so let me give you a brief recap of our last lecture or the last module. So, in the last module we were talking about the concept of self conscious emotions and in that context we have discussed that with the development of the concept of self a separate individual you know two processes kind of evolves one is self evaluation and another is social comparison and each of these uh, cognitive abilities uh, gives rise to diverse emotion emotions complex emotions which are called as self conscious emotions so we have discussed shame guilt embarrassment pride are as under the category of self evaluative emotion and we have discussed envy and jealousy under the category of social comparison emotions uh, so we have discussed all details of all these emotions their functions their consequences their uh, mental experiences expressions and all these details we have discussed we have also kind of compared most of them with one another uh, how they are different from each other. In the last class more specifically we talked about social comparison emotion uh, which is basically arises when we compare ourselves with others. In that context we have discussed uh, two particular um, emotions which are envy and jealousy. We have discussed that in that envy is basically envy as an emotion arises primarily when uh, a person desires something of something that is uh, other person has. So, and this or someone else possesses something and when people desires to you know, uh, to get whatever is possessed by other individual it could be uh, materials it could be achievement it could be some qualities etc uh, envy could be benign or it could be malicious benign envies are very you know normal and mild form of envy so you know it can also sometimes stimulate positive motivations in terms of you know uh, acquiring and improving your life to match with Whoever, who, with whom you are comparing. So, uh, malicious envy is basically problematic in that sense. This kind of envies are very strong, associated with very strong negative emotions like resentment, hostility, and so on. And uh, this may, uh, these are always associated with negative social outcomes and conflicts in relationship and so on. Jealousy we have discussed mostly uh, arises in the context of relationship, where you know, whenever a person uh, perceives that there is a threat in a valued relationship by a third person. So, the, 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 the emotion that arises is called jealousy and uh, we have discussed that jealousy could also lead to various negative outcomes, some positive aspects to it also, uh, but it is less, but uh, we have discussed that part also, uh, but a lot of uh, behavioral consequences which could be very destructive we have discussed all the details and we have also discussed the evolutionary basis of jealousy what what is the what are the evolutionary functions that it does so all these things we have discussed in the last class today we will be talking about uh, primarily the concept of positive emotions now most of the discussions are mostly a lot of discussions and a lot of research that we have discussed till now are primarily based on a lot of negative emotions so called negative emotions and uh, positive emotions we have not really discussed as a category. So, in this lecture particularly we will be talking about the concept of positive emotions and we will be talking about uh, diverse functions of positive com uh, emotions, the common positive emotions that we experience and so on. So, let us start today's lecture. So, before we talk about positive, positive emotions it is important to distinguish it from the negative emotions. So, one of the most common or popular way we distinguish emotions or categorize emotions in certain categories is based on positive emotion versus negative emotions. Now, how these two categories of emotions are different typically, basically. So, these are negative emotions are typically unpleasant feelings and they can be defined as an unpleasant or unhappy emotions which is evoked in individuals to express a negative effect towards an event or a person. So, the basic characteristics is how you experience it. So, negative emotions are experienced with unpleasant feelings. So, they are associated in terms of experience, they are unpleasant. So, that is the 
core defining features of negative emotions. So these are evoked typically when uh, we encounter some event or a person and you know the effect of those encounters are negative. So the mental experiences of this is negative. So we have discussed most of the basic emotions that we have discussed actually are negative emotions like fear, anger, disgust. Uh, I think joy and surprise could be somewhere you know categorized under positive emotions but most of the basic emotions that we have discussed are most of them are actually can come under uh, negative emotions in terms of experiences of it. Now positive emotions on the other hand are those emotions which are associated with pleasant feelings. So feelings there, is, there are pleasant feelings associated with them. So they can be defined as mental experiences that are both intense and pleasurable. So some kind of in terms of mental experiences we experience them with some pleasant feelings or pleasurable feelings. So it could be for example the emotion of joy. Whenever we experience joy, it is pleasant. There is a pleasantness associated with it. So that is why we can call it as a positive emotions. Now, positive emotions serve as a markers of flourishing and optimal well-being. Now, in the context of well-being, uh, positive emotions or happiness plays very important role. So, one of the indicators of flourishing life or a life which is full of well-being is that you know people experience a lot of positive emotions. So that indicates that life is in the right track and optimum well-being is experienced by those individuals. So, one of the indicator, one of the very significant indicator is positive emotions. If one is experiencing too much of negative emotions in their life, then we cannot say that there is a flourishing life. So, positive emotion in that set is a very important indicator. Positive emotions are always, you know, in the particularly in the field of positive psychology, which is a branch of psychology that relatively recently evolved, uh, where the focus is given what is good in human being, promoting the positive dimensions of human behavior, which were major, uh, which were mostly neglected in the history of psychology, because a lot of focus is given on the negative emotions, disorders and so on. But recently, the positive psychology as a branch um, evolved primarily to understand or give more, you know, focus on the what, what is good in human being, what is positive functionalities and so on. So, with the development of positive psychology, the positive emotions has received a lot of attention and positive emotions is an important indicator of flourishing life or life which is full of well-being. Uh, positive emotions are worth cultivating uh, not just as an end state in themselves but also as a means to achieve psychological growth and improve well-being over time. So, it is very important that we cultivate more and more positive emotion as much as possible to enhance well-being and quality of all life. Fredrickson, Barbara Fredrickson, uh, she is one of the prominent researcher in the field of positive emotions. She, d she is one of the uh, most prominent researcher. So, she gave some important theories as well as she uh, outlined 10 most commonly experienced positive emotions. So, we will be discussing each of them now. So, according to Fredrickson, uh, there are 10 positive emotions which are most commonly experienced by human beings. The first one is joy, which I think we have also discussed in the context of basic emotion. It is also considered as a basic emotion. So, joy is a delightful experience that is caused by something good. So, whenever something good happens in our life, the resultant experience, emotional experience is the joy that we feel good that something good has happened in your life. So, it is a very common emotions and uh, uh, a lot of these basic emotional theories consider it as a basic emotion. Now, gratitude, uh, she considered it as an emotion. Some people also consider it as a mental, uh, you know, it is it's, it's a cognitive concept or, but many people also consider it as an emotions, as an emotion. So, gratitude is basically the feeling of uh, thankfulness for something or someone in your life. So, so it is a very significant concept in positive psychology, particularly it is also considered as an uh, as an important concept for intervention for increasing happiness in our life. So, the moment we kind of feel thankful towards something or someone, immediately we feel you know, the, uh, uh, the positive emotions, we feel happy. The moment we complain about something, we feel sad about whatever we are complaining about, immediately the sadness arises. So, the one of the quality of gratitude is that it itself is considered as an emotion, which is a positive emotions. You feel happy and good about the 
the moment you express thankfulness towards something whatever in your life or towards an individual for doing something so the feeling of thankfulness for something or someone in your life is called as gratitude and uh, it is here it is considered as an emotion it is also used as an intervention for enhancing happiness in our life so it's a very significant concept because the natural tendency of human mind is to complain about things so by practicing gratitude you are kind of diverting your mind towards something intentionally to create positive emotions in your life so thankfulness are the feeling of thankfulness is always associated with happiness and so on so gratitude is one of the emotions which is a very uh, significant positive emotion that we experience and it has many positive repercussions in life the third positive emotion is called serenity it is uh, also experienced as a kind of peacefulness and tranquility so it is more like a joy but more quieter so in terms of physical arousal it is much more calm kind of emotion but it is in terms of experience it is more, more similar to joy but in joy the arousal level is little higher in serenity uh, the arousal level is low and people feel more calm and uh, tranquility is experienced you know so it is much more quieter uh, but in terms of experience it is very similar to joy so the difference could be in the physiological arousal part of it so serenity is mostly the peacefulness and tranquility which is also experienced as very pleasant experience in human mind so that is why it is also considered as a positive emotion the fourth positive emotion is interest so according to fredrickson this is also a positive emotion so it's a state of intrigue curiosity and engagement so whenever we are very curious about something you know so as that state of mind is called as interest so you are very interested in something so that engagement is there that that kind of focus is there on whatever it is you know so the moment we experience interest it is also experienced as a pleasant experience in our mind so that is why it is also considered as an emotion the fifth positive emotion is called as hope hope is more like a belief again you know a lot of people may not consider hope as a emotion it is more as a cognitive aspect people consider it as a kind of belief uh, which is more thought at the thought level uh, but according to fredrickson this also can be considered as an emotion so some of this uh, many researcher may not considered as typical emotion but they may have lot of more of cognitive aspect uh, but we are discussing the list that is given by uh, fredrickson here so hope is a belief and feeling belief and feeling associated with the belief that things will turn out best so whenever you have some positive expectations from the future then th that is that state is called as a hope so the obviously whenever you expect something positive to happen in future you will experience a positive state of mind so the hope itself uh, can be the state of mind which is called as a hope Uh, could be considered as a positive emotion because there is a feeling associated with whenever you experience or consider some positive outcomes in future it will give kind of stimulate positive emotion in you so hope is itself could be also considered as a positive emotion so it is a feeling of possibilities and optimism the sense of optimism is associated with it the sixth uh, positive emotion is called as a pride which we have already also discussed in detail under self evaluative emotion and uh, pride is generally a feeling of accomplishment achievement and mastery uh, so the moment we accomplish something achieve something there is a positive a positive evaluation associated with it and uh, that feeling is called as a pride and we have also discussed in the last class there can be negative aspect to pride to it which is called as a hubris which is associated with lot of arrogance and egoism and so on Uh, but here in the positive emotion it is considered as the, nat the 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 natural sense of pride that arises when we accomplish something in our life or we achieve something or there is a sense of mastery arises and then you have a positive evaluation about it so that positive aspect of pride is considered here as a positive emotion the seventh uh, positive emotion is called as amusement now it is the experience of fun humor and playfulness with others now one thing is very clear that amusement is experienced only in the context of other people so whenever there is a gathering group of people 
or <coughs> friends and so on. We experience the emotion of amusement. So, it is the experience of fun, humor, playfulness when we interact with other people, you know, the group of people or group of friends and so on. So, it is more social rather than individual experiences. Lot of other emotions that we have discussed could be very individually one can experience alone in their own private world. But amusement is experienced in the context of social gatherings. The eighth uh, positive emotion is called as inspiration. It is a feeling of upliftment when we see goodness and extraordinary feats. So, inspiration happens when you see something great, something which you value, but you know some something that is good, extraordinary and uh, you strive it motivates you to some higher things. So, that is an inspiration. You see something great and he, some extraordinary feats and you are motivated to reach there or motivated to achieve something greater. So, that is called inspiration. So, it is a positive thing because it gives you a positive push to your life, positive feeling also, uh, motivation also and so on. So, it is it's mo it makes us strive for great things that is a motivating force and in terms of mental experience it is a pleasant feeling also. So, this is called inspiration. The ninth is called awe. The f awe is a feeling of wonder, amazement and reverence. Awe is experienced when we see something vast and greater that we feel small and humbled. This feeling of awe is experienced whenever we something so vast, so something which is so great that you feel very small and feel humbled by looking at something you know. So, you feel a sense of wonder, amazement and a reverence towards something. So, it can happen let us say when uh, we go to some hill station sometimes we feel the you know great hills and full of greenery and their size is so immense and huge that you feel sense of woe and you feel so small in front of that and feel humbled by that this natural phenomenon. So, we experience woe, it could be when we see something natural or it could be also in the context of lot of other achievements of other people and so on. So, that is that is the core aspects of woe is that you feel small and humbled by seeing something great and you experience sense of wonder, amazement and so on. The tenth one is called as the emotion of love. Uh, so, according to Fredrickson, it is a combination of all the above feelings. Love can have combination of all the other positive emotions. Whenever we experience love, we can experience inspiration, we can experience woe, we can experience joy. So, it can com it can have combination of all the emotions, all the positive emotions. <coughs> uh, it includes feelings of warmth, trust, sharing, etcetera. It connects us with others strongly and affectionately. So, whenever we experience love as an emotion, it connects us with other people. So, it, it kinds of uh, bridges the gap between individuals or other people. So, and uh, we have a positive emotions towards the situations and with the other people and it can include all kinds of mixed feelings. So, it is a very complex emotion and uh, but it is a positive emotion and it kind of helps people to connect with each other. So, these are the 10 positive emotions uh, according to Fredrickson uh, that are commonly experienced by human beings. Now, one of the thing that uh, we, we you might have observed if, even from all the other lectures that we had about emotions that very less positive emotions were actually discussed either under basic emotions or whatever other self conscious emotion most of the emotions are mostly categorized under negative emotions. So, one thing was is very clear whatever till now we have discussed that you know positive emotions are very less studied emotions. They have not been given the foc focus, the kind of focus that negative emotion received. So, they are less studies compared to the negative emotions. So, compared to pos uh, positive emotions, negative emotions actually uh, has received much more attention in the field of psychology. So, there are many reasons behind it why this has happened. Um, most of the discussions in emotions comes with discussion of negative emotions. Some of the reasons are focus was more on understanding and treating psychological problems and disorders. So, if you look at 
psychological problems and disorders they are more lot of this emo lot of these disorders are associated with negative emotions or some kind of problem with the emotions which are negative destructive emotions or the person is not able to regulate emotions so for example depression will be associated with a uh, lot of sadness and uh, you know so so the whole emotional expression will be associated with sadness and so on so lot of these emotions negative emotions are associated with most of the psychological disorders as a result because treatment of disorders is very important and it requires immediate attention because this is something if something is problematic we need to fix them more the focus is given more on fixing something which is more necessary more urgent so since treatment of disorders and the negative emotion always creates problem even if you look at beyond disorders uh, the if negative emotions are expressed too much you know so it pro creates problem and lessens the quality of life of human beings in general so in order to improve the quality of life uh, treat the disorders we the attention was given more on negative emotions simply because it was required and it was more urgent so less attention less space was given to positive emotions so this is one of the one of the main reasons another important reason is that you know there are less number of positive emotions than negative ones at least at least emotion positive emotions are num in number wise also very less uh, even in this list of 10 positive emotions many people some of these positive emotion may not consider them as a emotion also like uh, you know like gratitude hope and so on but you have lot of negative emotions refined negative emotions and that have already been discussed also some of them a so lot of them we have already discussed so number wise also positive emotions are less so studying them the less studies will be a natural outcome to it so according to fredrickson there are there seems to be only one positive emotions for every three or four negative emotions so if you in as a, as a rule of thumb if you look at it so for three or four negative emotion there will be one if you see the proportion of it so this is how the uh, numbers can be kind of understood you know so positive emotions are much less in number so the studies are also less another very significant reason why positive emotions were less studied is that you know positive emotions are less distinct from one another and are more difficult to define them lot of these positive emotions are very overlapping you know and very difficult to define the boundaries of them where one emotion ends and where another starts so it's very difficult for example you know here it is given it is difficult to differentiate between joy and amusement you know or joy or serenity it's very difficult to you know give a specific boundary line where joy ends and serenity and starts or amusement starts so mental experience wise there lot of these positive emotions are very less distinct and it is difficult to clearly define them and study them so then because of this practical problem also lot very less studies are available in the literature or in the research field uh, in the for positive emotions however uh, with the rise of positive psychology as we have already said this is a relatively new branch of psychology where focus is given on what is good in human being what is positive in human being uh, so for the focus is given on well being uh, positive quality of life and so on the positive emotion started receiving more attention and more and more studies came up Uh, and more and more researcher showed interest in understanding positive emotion so so that is one of the reasons uh, uh, that overall if you see still a lot very less studies are there for positive emotions but slowly slowly people have started looking at and giving more focus more attention to positive emotions also now let us see what are the functions of positive emotions if you see broadly all positive emotions we will not talk about distinctively one one emotions but broadly positive emotion as a category now we'll try to understand the functions of positive emotions through a theory that was proposed by barbara fredrickson and the name of this theory is broaden and build theory of positive emotions so this is the name of the theory broaden and build theory of positive emotion 
proposed by Barbara Fredrickson and through this theory we will see what are the functions or values of positive emotions, what are the purposes that it serves. So, let us see one by one. So, one of the thing that uh, broaden and build theory talks about is that positive emotions broadens our thought action repertoires. So, it broadens our perspectives. So, that is why it is called broaden, broaden and build, the build part we will see later. So, positive emotion one of the distinctive characteristics of positive emotion that it broadens our thought action. So, thought level action is generally connected to thought. So, thoughts and actions the whole horizon of it also kind of gets expanded whenever we experience positive emotion. So, positive emotions such as joy or interest broadens our attention and thinking and makes us creative see more opportunities and be more flexible and open minded. So, whenever uh, I think a uh, lot of us might have also experienced it in our life, whenever we experience a positive emotions, we kind of feel expanded, we kind of broadens our whole perspective uh, and whenever we feel negative emotions, we feel more narrow and constricted. For example, the moment we experience fear, we want to kind of go and hide and become constricted. The whole body language shows that you want to, you are restricted, you are, your whole everything, whole perspective has narrowed down because of too much attention to danger and so on. On the other hand, whenever we experience joy, interest, we feel expanded, we want to do lot of things. Uh, there is a positive energy to it and so on. So, sense of expansion in terms of thought processes, in terms of action is very evident whenever we experience positive emotions. So, this positive emotions kinds of broadens our thought processes and makes us creative, see more opportunities uh, and more flexible open minded. So, mind becomes much more open and flexible that is why we can detect more things in our environment, more opportunities can be looked seen as compared to when one is very much focused on only negative emotion which narrows your attention and you see less opportunities, less you become less creative and so on. So, this is one of the most important function that positive emotion does and it is in contrast to negative emotions, just negative emotion does just the opposite to it. So, one of the experiment that was done by uh, Fredrickson and her colleague in 2002 look at this whole hypothesis. So, there are many evidences to it, but they, I will just discuss one of the experiment that they, that they uh, did to kind of prove this hypothesis that positive emotion broadens your perspective. So, basically they did an experiment to test this hypothesis. So, so there are two conditions where participants were divided. One condition is emotional emotion condition. So, in this condition participants, some participants were assigned here, some participants are assigned here. One is control condition, one is emotion condition. So, in this emotion condition participants were shown short emotionally evocative film clips to induce specific emotions of joy, contentment, fear and anger. So, these four emotions were induced by how it was induced by showing clips of films. So, this films uh, that clips were kind of showing some emotional scenes. Some films were related to joy, some clips were related to joy, emotion of joy, some clips were related to contentment, some clips were related to fear, some, some were anger. So, by seeing that it will indu induce the feeling of anger. So, participants were sh shown uh, this specific clips of emotions just to induce these emotions. Some participants were under control condition where they were showing neutral clips. So, there was no emotion involved in it. So, different participants, some, uh, some participants were induced joy, some participants were induced contentment, some were induced fear and anger and so on. Like this different emotions were induced for different, different group of participants. Some participants were in the control condition where no emotion was induced. The next was they were given some performance tasks immediately after showing each of these clips participants thought actions reporters were measured. How thoughts and action reporter were measured by asking them to step away from the specifics of the film. So, they were just asked just now step away from the film scene 
just you know in the in terms of just forget about it and imagine being in a situation in which similar feelings should arise. Now, imagine that you are in a situation where for different participant different conditions were there for jo participant in the joy condition they were asked uh, imagine you are in a situations where joy as an emotion arises for other participant contentment arises fear arises anger arises and so on. So, basically this emotion was induced and immediately with that emotion they were asked to imagine a situation where similar emotions were induced in life and they were asked to to list to make a list what they would do right then given this feeling. So, whenever under you are under this feeling what would you do? What they would do right then given this feeling. So, it was induced artificially first and then they were asked to that when this situation similar situation arises in life or whenever it was arised earlier in your life what would you like to do or it whenever such emotion arises given this feeling. So, this feeling was already there within them because it was just induced and uh, they were asked to imagine a situation when this feeling is arising in, in their life. So, what would they do? What kind of activities whatever they kind, kind of make a list of things that they would like to do under this emotion and it was not like they are just imagining this emotion is already induced in them. Similar emotion they need to imagine that when it arises in their life what they would do. So, they were seeing under different emotional condition what are the things that people do. So, result they found number of things the participant reported under different conditions are like this. So, the positive emotional conditions the participants who are induced positive emotion like joy and contentment they reported highest number of things they would do. So, they made a list what they would do. So, this participant reported highest number of list in terms of activities they would do. Then it was followed by neutral control conditions. So, under neutral control conditions where no emotion was induced uh, they also made a list of things they would do under neutral conditions and uh, so they also did but uh, the, it was less than positive emotion condition and the least number of activities was reported by participants who are induced negative emotional conditions. So, under uh, under uh, anger fear people because it is so engrossed their um, mind that people do not have the energy to explore things and do things. So, under negative emotion least number of activities were reported by the participant. What, 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 what is the takeaway message of this uh, experiment or what is the conclusion that we can see that it kind of proves that positive under positive emotion it kind of thoughts and actions are broadened. So, that is why the participant under positive emotion condition reported highest number of activities and under negative condition people uh, reported the least number of activities even lower than the neut neutral condition. So, that means, under negative condition people narrows this whole narrowing down of the thought action report reporter is there. So, it kind of proves their hypothesis uh, from this experiment. The next uh, the function of positive emotion is that it undo lingering negative emotions. One of the function of positive emotion is that you know whenever you have some negative emotions if positive both positive and negative emotion cannot stay together. So, let us say you are undergoing some positive negative emotions, then if positive emotion is stimulated the negative emotion will be undone means it will vanish because both cannot exist together. They can happen one after the other, but simultaneously they cannot exist in, in us. So, that is the idea of positive emotion can undo the lingering negative emotion. So, the effect of negative emotions will be undone by the positive emotions. So, if positive emotions are induced the impact of negative emotion will reduce or diminish or it will completely you know vanish. So, positive emotions uh, help us to recover from the harmful effects of negative emotions. We generally do not experience both positive and negative emotions simultaneously. Therefore, inducing positive emotions when we are experiencing negative emotions such as stress, anxiety, anger can diminish the intensity and duration of such negative emotions. So, it has lot of practical application also, 
that uh, when uh, somebody is under negative emotions, if you can induce positive emotions by whatever, let us say, suppose you are very sad certain situation, somebody just cracks a joke. So, your sadness may disappear simply because this joke induces positive emotion and it kind of diminishes negative emotion, impact of no negative emotions. So, it helps us to recover from the harmful effect of negative emotions. So, that is something very important because both cannot exist together. Again, Fredrickson and colleagues also tested this hypothesis using uh, some experiment. So, the experiment, uh, the broad outline of the experiment is like this. So, they gave a time pressured speech preparation task. So, participants were asked to prepare a speech on some topic. And they are given let us say 1 minute time, time pressure was given, very less time was given to prepare something. So, obviously, it will induce negative emotion, it will induce anxiety and stress because very less time and you have to prepare something. So, it is an artificial way of inducing negative emotion. Okay. So, this is what they did, a time pressured speech preparation task was given, 1 minute time to prepare a speech on a topic. So, was given to the participant to induce high activation negative emotions such as anxiety and stress. Okay. Now, this speech task induces uh, subjective experience of anxiety along with increases cardiovascular response. So, the moment we feel anxious, cardiovascular response also increases like heartbeat will increase, you know, breathing pattern will increase and so on. So, different heartbeat parameters can be measured through instruments and so on. So, lot of cardiovascular response also increases, you know, beats and pressures and so on, blood pressure also increases and so on. So, these are all uh, different parameters that indicates anxiety and so on. So, into this context of anxiety related sympathetic arousal, participants were randomly assigned to view one of the four films. Okay. Now, the participants were induced this uh, anxiety. In this condition of anxiety situation, uh, these were immediately shown, um, they were assigned, all these participants were assigned into different groups to view one of the four films. So, four films clip conditions were there. So, participants were randomly assigned to one of these. So, they will see one of these four films. Some participant will see one film, some participant will see second film, some participant will see third film, fourth participant will see, fourth category of participant will see the fourth film clips. Now, basically what are these four films or film clips? Two films were associated with mild positive emotions, joy and contentment. So, two films clips were associated with content which are related to expression of joy and contentment. Third film was neutral condition, so there was no emotional condition. Fourth film was related to sadness. Okay. Now, already all the participants are in the high anxiety situation in the, their system which was measured using cardiovascular response and so on. Now, in this condition of high anxiety, they were shown participants were shown different, the, so different group of participants were assigned into four conditions. Each conditions were, each condition in, included film clips of different emotions. So, joy, contentment, fear and neutral condition. Now, what they found in the result is that participants in the two positive emotion condition that is joy and contentment when these film clips were shown to the high and anxious individuals. It exhibits a faster cardiovascular recovery. So, this whatever this heartbeat, fast heartbeat and everything was there, which was associated with anxiety, that recovery was fastest in the positive emotion condition when they were showing positive film clips. So, heartbeat became normal very fast for participant who had seen these positive emotions in the film clips. So, fastest, faster recovery of cardiovascular uh, response then did those neutral control condition. So, neutral control condition as compared to neutral control condition, uh, condition uh, the uh, positive emotion condition, there was a faster, faster recovery of cardiovascular response. Participant in the sadness condition exhibited the most delayed recovery. So, again, again, again the, condi uh, the response in terms of participant, the fastest recovery were in the positive emotion condition, then neutral condition and the least or the highest time taking condition was 
the uh, sadness condition, the participants who are shown sad film clips. So, it prolonged the impact of negative emotions because it sadness again itself is a negative emotions. So, it did not counteract the impact of negative emotions. On the other hand, positive emotions when it is shown, it was immediately the participants heartbeat and everything became normal in the fastest possible time. Neutral condition also became normal, but it was it took little bit more time and the highest time was taken in the sadness condition. So, it kind of proves that positive emotion kind of counteracts or removes or diminishes the impact of negative emotions. So, the next function of positive emotion is that it, it enhances resilience. So, resilience basically it is your our ability to bounce back from adversities of life. So, when something negative happens in our life, how quickly we can bounce back to your normal functioning level. Obviously, whenever something negative happens in our life, it impacts us negatively and we are not able to function properly for some time. But resilience is the ability to come back quickly. So, the more resilient you are, more the uh, so much quicker you will be able to come back or bounce back from the negative conditions. So, that quality is called resilience. So, some people may be much more resilient as compared to others in terms of bouncing back to their normal function after a setback or an adversity. So, this positive emotion enhances our ability to cope with adversity and resilience. So, one of the proposition is that you know positive emotion increases this sense of resilience. Obviously, when something setback happens, negative emotion is more dominant. So, it becomes if more and more negative emotion comes, it becomes more difficult to come back. However, if positive emotions are induced in that condition, they will be able to people will be able to bounce back much more quickly. So, that will enhance their sense of resilience. So, that is the proposition. So, positive emotions by broadening our thought action repertoire facilitates problem focused and other adaptive coping. So, if positive emotions help us to cope and counteract the uh, negative impact of negative emotion, then by definition they should enhance the resilience or ability to bounce back because they will help you help you also in coping with the adversities of life. Now, resilient individual bounce back from stressful experiences quickly and efficiently. So, that is the definition of resilience. Now, this definition implies by definition that in comparison to the less resilient people, resilient individual would display quicker recovery of cardiovascular function. So, cardiovascular function basically means let us say when you are under a negative emotions or anxiety or something as we have already discussed in the last experiment, your cardiovascular response or functions becomes much more uh, no, faster and whenever we experience intense negative emotions, it could be fear, anxiety and so on. Furthermore, this capacity to return to baseline cardiovascular style might be fueled by experience of positive emotions that we have already seen. So, if positive emotions can help us to recover from those cardiovascular response which are very like fast heartbeat and so on, if they help us to recover to come to the baseline level, then that means their positive emotions is quickening our ability to come back to the normal or baseline functioning. So, that is resilience. So, earlier experiment can indirectly also proves that positive emotion can enhance our resilience because it help us to come back quickly to our baseline level of functioning. So, it if it quickens the process of coming back or becoming normal functioning, that means it is enhancing the resilience also. And this was kind of very much evident in the earlier experiment that we have discussed. Now, the another function of positive emotion is that, uh, that it builds psychological resources, means it help us to build some resources to deal with the uh, certain positive qualities to different for, for dealing with different circumstances of life. So, positive emotion can also build physical, intellectual or mental, social and psychological resources some positive things may be added to you because of experience of positive emotions. For example, some of the research shows that positive emotion builds intellectual resources through enhanced learning and performance. So, under positive emotion because of the broadening of thought actions, people also learn more, uh, they are able to perform better. So, in that sense, they will also add on to your intellectual resources. So, if you learn more, you are able to process more information. So, it will be an kind of enhance your intellectual resources. 
because you will be learning more and uh, other thing under positive emotions. So, positive emotions are associated with play can build physical abilities and so on. In many contexts under whenever we feel more positive emotion we like to play even physical sports and so on that can also build your physical abilities and resources for a lot of people. Uh, positive emotions are also key to building and maintaining social relationships and thus facilitate social resources. One of the thing is that whenever we experience positive emotion we want to connect with people because it broadens your perspectives, it expands you when you want to go and connect with people. Under negative emotions we get kind of disconnected from people or conflicts happens in our relationship. Whenever you feel anger, you, you want to disconnect from people or there will be conflict in your relationship. On the other hand, when you feel joy, you want to share your experience and go to friends and talk about it. So that one of the things is that positive emotion help us to build and maintain social relationships. So people who experience more positive emotions generally people also wants, wants to be connected with them more because they also feel happy by connecting with them. People who are showing mostly most of the time negative emotion people slowly slowly run away from them. So in that sense positive emotions are also key to building and maintaining social relationship and thus facilitate social resources. Another thing is that positive emotion can trigger an upward developmental sp spiral. So what does basically it means that at neg as negative emotions such as under depression, depressed mood can arouse downward spiral of negative thoughts and emotion and lead us to a vicious negativity. So under negative emotions we go into downward spiral means let us say you are under depressed mood so you will not feel like talking to people. Uh, you are more likely to attract again negative situations in life. Let us say you will become more alone and aloneness may trigger more negative emotions, more negative emotions, more negative situations in life. So, like this one event after will trigger another event will trigger another event. So, in case of negative emotion that trigger will go in the downwards means more negative aspects. Similarly, positive emotion can trigger one after the other event which go in the positive direction. So, in that sense it is so called as an upward development. So, under positive emotion you may do more things positive and connect with people one event after other more positive emotions more positive things will happen in your life. So, it can trigger a upward movement spiral movement. So, in that sense so one good thing will trigger another good thing one bad thing will trigger another bad thing this is what happens mostly in life. So, sometimes people get into the vicious cycle one is triggering the other and they are not able to come out of it. So, it goes circular one by one. So, a lot of these depressed people, depression uh, people who are patients of depression, they get into these vicious cycles and they are not able to come out of it because one negative thing is triggering another, another is making them more depressed, more depressed, more negative things. So, like this it becomes a vicious cycle. So, positive emotions will give you into more positive uh, cycles and positive outcomes. Positive emotions also may protect health. So, this is also very important because uh, this is just uh, another way of saying that negative emotions you know it is harmful for our health. So, a lot of research evidence are uh, you know available lot of research has already been conducted where it shows negative emotions such as anxiety stress can not only make you mental health issues it can create physical health issues in terms of it can cause lot of physical diseases such as heart diseases and so on whenever under stressful condition the stress hormones are released in the blood and excessive stress hormone can cause heart diseases, blockages of the heart, it can reduce your immunity, immunity uh, reduce can make you more vulnerable for viral diseases, bacterial diseases and so on. So, lot of evidences are already there in the health psychology research uh, and uh, posi since positive emotion can lessen or diminish the effect of negative emotions. So, in that sense it can protect our health, it can kind of help us to uh, undo all the negative effect of negative, uh, negative emotions. So, both positive and uh, both mental and physical health may be protected by positive emotions. There is an another concept by, uh, given by uh, Fred Dixon which is called as a positivity ratio. So, the concept is basically uh, is that psychological well being generally requires a ratio of positive emotions to negative emotion as 2.9 is to 1 exactly, but in general we can say 3 is to 1. So, if you experience 3 positive emotions in uh, opposite to 1 negative emotion. So, if you experience 1 negative emotion and 3 negative uh, positive emotions 
if the ratio is like this in general i mean obviously no one can count like this in real life but if you experience more frequent three times of negative emotions so if you experience one negative emotions for one negative emotion you are experiencing three positive emotions this will kind of stimulate upward spiral of positive emotions and it will help increase well being and flourishing in life so this ratio is important according to them they kind of found it in one of their research that 3 to 1 ratio is uh, very important i mean uh, at least this is the proportion needed for enhancing well being in our life people who reported three or more instances more is obviously can be better positive emotions for every one instance of the negative emotion uh, were more likely to stimulate upward spiral of positivity and can lead to experience flourish and resilience in life so this is something uh, some of the evidence they found in their research now most one important um, aspect of this whole discussion is that since positive emotion does lot of important functions uh, or impact positively in our life and health so how can we build positive emotions more obviously there are many different ways one can increase positive emotions in one's life uh, everybody may have their own ways of uh, increasing positive emotions but some of the important things that can be discussed is here uh, one of the thing uh, that we can do to enhance positive emotion is to practice gratitude now this is generally people don't give conscious attention to it that whenever we practice gratitude in our life which basically means you consciously pay attention to what's good in your life and be thankful for it so that is gratitude because tendency of mind is to find what is wrong in our life so it's a natural tendency it will go in that direction and whenever we find something wrong in our life obviously we will feel miserable we will feel sad but you can also kind of bring your attention consciously to those things where which are good in your life so nobody's life is 100% bad you know so there will be lot of good things also in everybody's life but we never pay attention to those things we pay more attention to what is wrong in our life because of this mindset we experience more negative emotions but if you can kind of focus on what is good in our life so many things we can be grateful about for the good people good friends that we have so many supportive relationships we have we can be grateful about it uh, so many achievement that we have achieved in our life we can be grateful about it so many good memories that we had in our life we can be grateful about them so consciously we people can do those kind of gratitude exercise by taking some time and thinking about them especially when we are feeling bad can stimulate positive emotions so practicing gratitude is very important uh, people can consciously do it by finding time and regularly also do it by making some journal exercise where you can list out things and kind of uh, uh, focus on them uh, so immediately it will enhance positive emotions so these are kind of research findings are very evident on gratitude exercises and so on positive emotion can also be enhanced by doing activities that people enjoy so one thing you can find whenever you do anything that you like or you are intrinsically motivated whenever we do things which we are really like to do things which are basically this is called intrinsic motivation so you are doing something under intrinsic motivation so you are motivated from inside not outside so you are not doing things just to get money or something like that you love to do something so you are doing so those activities always enhances positive emotion we feel good about it so it may include a lot of hobbies whatever it is you you like to do it could be sports it could be painting it could be singing it could be dancing whatever it is everybody has their own things so we, we cannot have a generalized thing here so whatever you one is intrinsically motivated to do try to do more and more of these activities find time for these things the more you do these things more happy you will feel more positive emotion you will experience so this is another way of enhancing positive emotions obviously spending time with loved one is something very important we all know whenever we connect with loved ones friends families and so on we feel good about it and even though if you, you may be feeling some negative emotions by sharing them with other people with the loved ones the impact of them always diminishes when we are around loved ones but the problem is lot of people may not 
find lot of time to connect with loved ones. So, try to find more and more time. In today's world, even if people are physically separated, one can connect with technology, video calls and so on. So, the idea is to connect more and more that will enhance positive emotions. Positive emotions can also be enhanced by playing with children, pets and friends. These are some of the other things. Some people also find lot of positive emotion by you know, you know connecting with pets also even. Human beings obviously, it gives lot of emotions and pets can also give lot of positive emotions. So, lot of people uh, have lot of affinity for pets like dogs and cats, playing with them you know, seeing them around them also enhances positive emotions. So, those things can also be there. Another interesting thing is that doing exercise particularly aerobic exercise can enhance positive emotions. In fact, research shows that when people do aerobic exercise particularly regularly, it enhances or releases a hormone in the brain which is called as endorphins and the function of that hormone is to you know, kind of shifts your mood to positive mode, it enhances positive mood. So, lot of people who do lot of regular exercises, you, you, can, you will find uh, you may find when you do exercise in the morning, in the whole day you will feel good about it yourself. So, some sense of positive mood is stimulated by exercise particularly aerobic exercises, because there is a physiological mechanism to it, it releases some you know mood enhancing hormones. So, that also impacts your mood and obviously, listening to uplifting music that you like can also enhance your positive emotions. Music is always you know something that everybody connects with it goes much deeper to your mind, you know, it directly touches your heart and especially the music that you like okay, by listening to them can enhance your mood immediately. So, these are some of the things one can do to enhance positive emotions in one's life and the more positive emotion we experience better it is in terms of our quality of life, in terms of our well being, in terms of our physical health also. Now, let us just uh, at the end uh, let us talk about that should we then always kind of avoid negative emotions or so negative emotions are always bad or something like that. So, let us see the, pers uh, the perspective of that as aspect also. Now, negative emotion we cannot avoid it because it is part of our life and they also serve a lot of important functions as we, as we have discussed. All emotions have important functions in our life. They are here because they serve some important things in our life. Evolutionary they are evolved because they are important. So, we should not like brush it aside that negative emotions are bad or something like that, they will be there. Uh, only problem is that too much of it is problematic, you know. So, that is why in that ratio of 3 to 1 means even in 3 to 1, one negative emotion is there. So, the thing is uh, the frequency of it, how much of it you experience. Sometimes you cannot avoid negative emotions, but more and more positive emotion in terms of frequency is always better. So, that is what is important, you know. So, the problem is most of us are experiencing. Uh, too much of negative emotion. Therefore, there is a need for increasing positive emotion. So, that is why the need is more for positive emotion because it is naturally we are experiencing it less. So, excess of anything could be bad including positive emotions, too much of positive emotions like you know can be dysfunctional in some context. For example, there is a disorder called as uh, mania. It becomes a disorder means in, in, in that people in this state they basically uh, show excessive high mood too much of activity they will do and uh, you know lot of energy agitation they will throw things around and people around them will like suffer like they cannot kind of like control lot of euphoria unusual talk too much of talking they will be doing mind will be you know rushing with thoughts and so on so that is also kind of positive emotions but it is too much of excessive you know and it becomes problematic because it is functional you understand so that is something we usually answer and sometimes you know in certain disorder has positive emotions, but is it is dysfunctional. So, this is called as a mania, mania symptom. So, some people have manic depressive symptom. So, they go into depression and then mania means totally opposite of depression. They will be doing too much of laughing and uh, shouting and doing things too much of talking, then they will go into depression. So, this cycle goes on and on. So, that is one thing we should understand. So, Bonnewell 2012 proposed some of the positive impact of negative emotion. Negative emotion does lot of important functions as we have said. So, they are there to serve something. For example, negative emotion can instigate fundamental personality change. People can change because of some negative emotions. When something hits you very strongly, you kind of reflect back and try to and it can change you as a person positively. So, 
there is a concept called post traumatic growth which shows that lot of research shows that after traumatic event which is very negative even impacts them very badly but people come out of it positively with lot of more strength more vigor and you know uh, in their life and uh, they can see their life totally new perspective for example let's say somebody survives cancer or something like that now they will see life in a totally different perspective it was a traumatic event but it changed them as a person now they will enjoy small small things in their life because they will not take life for granted they know the life was almost end for me now i came back so life is no longer granted you know now you enjoy you see the value of life so sometimes lot of negative events or emotions can make you more think deeper and it can change you as a person uh, so it can do lot of things people can realize they have much more strength to face problems in their life if you don't have problems in your life you will not understand how much strength you have so lot of these things are collectively called as post traumatic growth and uh, it can be triggered by lot of negative emotions sometimes negative emotions can also lead to self reflection and put in touch with our deeper self as i said uh, so this is something connected to what i have said suffering and negative emotion may also make us wise and facilitate learning and understanding of ourselves and the world people become wise when they suffer and they deal with lot of negative aspects in their life you know people don't become wise just by enjoying every enjoying or getting all the good things in their life you know so deepness in the life or uh, the uh, comes from you know struggling and adversities of life and so on it kind of propels you forces you to go, go into the deeper aspect of yourself as a person and reflect your positivities and negative weaknesses and strength and so on so that makes as a person much more a deeper you know connection with the deeper self is very evident in these cases coping with negative emotions may cause positive social consequences such as care empathy morality modesty so all these qualities like empathy morality modesty can develop when people cope with negative adversities of life and, and deal with negative emotions now all these are possibilities not necessarily it will happen to everybody so the thing is that what we are saying is here that positive emotion are very important for flourishing and well being of life having said that we should not just look at negative emotions as negative and should be kind of bad they also serve important functions they can do lot of positive functions as well so this both the aspects we need to understand in talking about positive and negative emotions so these are some of the important things uh, that uh, significant in terms of discussion of this uh, with this i'll stop here Thank you.